Hello everyone, I welcome you all to this channel on Mac Talk. Today we are going to look at this subject fluid mechanics. So before knowing what is fluid mechanics, I think it is important for us to understand why fluid mechanics is important. That means why do I need to study fluid mechanics at all, right? So we are going to discuss 10 reasons that I found important to share with you. So the very first reason is that when it comes to our basic elements that, are, uh, that is water, fire, air and earth, Except earth, we study all that. We deal with all that except earth when it comes to our basic elements. So this is something important because when it comes to water, you see 71% um, of surface of our earth is covered by water. And if we are dealing with that, the subject must be of higher significance. Second, almost all of our electrical energy is by fluid flow. See, in India, we have uh, hydraulic power stations in which we get electrical energy by fluid flow and that is done by this hydraulic turbine. What happens is that if, uh, let's say, this is the flow uh, which is coming in uh, to the turbine and that is creating a rotational motion by hitting at the blade. At the center of it, there is a shaft which, which in turn rotate and that we coupled with the generator which ultimately give us electrical energy uh, in our houses all right the second thing is uh, fluid mechanics is very much applicable in hydraulic machines as uh, we lift heavy weight by means of it by using hydraulic system or by using fluid secondly you can see this pump which is also important for you to elevate and deliver your water or fluid to some height third application or you can say means third why for studying fluid mechanics is its relevance in automobile field. When it comes to hydraulic brake system, it works on Pascal's law, right? It works on Pascal's law and that we have taken from our fluid mechanics. So how it works? Suppose this is the first column and which is connected with the second column by means of some fluid, by means of some fluid and that fluid may be oil or something like this. So there is a piston which can easily go up and down and there is another piston on this column so what happens is that if we want to lift this heavy weight suppose let's say it is 1000 kilogram and the area is 200 centimeter square now i want to lift this 1000 kilogram weight what will i do with this system i will just apply i will just apply if it is one centimeter square area then I will just apply not the 1000 kilogram force but 50 kilogram force in order to lift this heavy weight. So 50 kilogram force is lifting this 1000 kilogram of weight. So uh, you can understand how much important it is for us to apply the hydraulic brake system in our cars, right? So this is how it works. Next, uh, in heating, cooling and ventilation system, of course, there is a, a fluid flow. So we need a certain level of fluid mechanics in order to do, deal with that or in order to design all that system. Fuel pump, fuel injector, carburetor of engine. So all these are basically going to deal with the fluid. Of course, there is a need of fluid mechanics. Next, in aerodynamic design, see if there is uh, this car and that too is running at very high speed. So what will happen is that there must be the separation of fluid and that fluid separation must be smooth enough so that there will be less air resistance while the car is running. So that can happen only when the body of the car is a streamlined shape, right? If it is not, then it won't work in this way. Then the force or you can say the drag force will be increased or the air resistance will increase. So in that way, you are going to lose lots of your efficiency provided through engine. So what you can do in order to avoid this situation is that you make your car in such a shape so that the fluid easily separates and make its way all through its body. The next application could be medical science. See, in medical science, we use respirators, dialysis equipment, ventilators, artificial hearts, all they are going to deal with the fluid flow and ventilators if you see this diagram uh, in ventilator we have a computer embedded system which helps to uh, give some sort of oxygen 
and that it does when it supplies a calculated amount of air air inside the lungs so that it expands and it sucks the air after that and then it contracts so for that we need a fluid mechanics because we are going to regulate or maintain the air flow in this condition also similarly there is this artificial heart we use when there is no donor available to the patient so for a temporary solution we use this artificial heart so in this case also you are going to deal with fluid fluid means gas or liquid so in this case we will be having blood and oxygen to deal with right oxygen earlier we used to mix both the things in a particular chamber but it has created a lot of problem if the oxygen you give and will be in larger extent uh, it may create a blood bubble or if the blood is not uh, properly given to the patient it may create a blood clotting so this is very important for you to know the fluid flow basically particularly the blood and oxygen flow um, together when dealing with artificial hearts fifth why of studying fluid mechanics is that design of aerodynamic aircraft see we know we have taken this design of aerodyne uh, aircrafts from our birds let's say there are some air molecules and that are traveling uh, at very high velocity so if you somehow create a high velocity you will be going to have a area in which there is a low pressure region because that region you have created by eliminating or by removing the air particles from from that particular region so what you do here is you do the same thing in this case in this uh, case of bird when it um, pushes the wings in downward direction all the air molecules that were there at upside of it or above the wings gone from their place so what happens is that you get low pressure region over here and high pressure region over here because the amount of molecules you have increased here uh, by pushing this wings downward okay so this same thing is done by our bird and that create a kind of vertices through the tip of its wing and that vertices is what we are going to look after some time but before that you just see here this same thing we apply in our aircrafts we create high pressure region below the wing and above the wing we create low pressure region so that the air molecules can apply force and lift our aeroplane from by when when they go from high pressure region to low pressure region so for applying the concept of this bird what we do is we create a wing uh, we create a aerofoil and that is the cross section part of this so above the wing you may see this type of flow and below it you will see a smooth flow of air because of that the velocity above the wing increases and the velocity below the wing decreases and because of that the region that is created above the wing is of lower pressure and the region that is created below the wing is of higher pressure and you know the significance of it and this way you are going to lift your aeroplane and that will gonna fly so in this way air molecules below wings a force which is sufficient enough to fly this aeroplane at some height see as i've talked about this vertices that is formed because of this air molecule that are going through high pressure region to low pressure region so what they do is they form a kind of vertices and that vertices is not good for our aeroplane because if they, these vertices are forming then uh, the fuel efficiency of your aeroplane is certainly going to drop in order to overcome that we design this which is what we call winglet winglet so what it does is it prevents to form that vertices from the tip of the aeroplane wing and along with that in this way we also increase our uh, fuel efficiency from 3 to 4 percent now see these birds are uh, in a symmetric shape they are flying in the symmetric shape so what is the reason behind flying of these bird in v shape particularly so if you see this is the leader why this is the leader because as i have said because of the high pressure region see if there is a bird like this and there are some other birds chasing it 
in a symmetric shape or a V shape. So this bird is applying a downward force through its wings that is creating a downwash. And because of that, the air comes above it and it just goes on and on and create a vertices. And that force apply upwash to the other bird creating or helping another bird to fly easily. So this same happens through its other wing and it goes as an upwash to other bird. So in this way, other birds are benefiting through the leader and they are also interchanging their position so that as the bird working as a leader want exhaust. Next we have here is the vertices that is forming and coming out of an engine of aircraft and in this second video you can see there is a condensation happening because pressure reaches very low at the center because of the compressor blades that are rotating and temperature too drops so the air comes below uh, below its dew point and a condensation happens and in this next video you can see the uh, the spoilers that are there and uh, they they come into action and this another video you can see these are the vortices that forms through the yes through the wing uh, through the tip of the wing as i discussed it earlier so in this uh, in this video you can see the spoiler are there and what they are doing actually is they are managing or they are uh, they are regulating uh, the fluid flow uh, the, they are regulating the airflow in such a way so that the airplane itself deaccelerates number 6 design of rockets and ships what happens in a uh, liquid propellant rocket there is a liquid which applies the force according to third law of newton you can see here that it applies the force a certain force uh, that is needed for this rocket to fly or this rocket to uh, go upward in direction and along with that you also need a aerodynamic shape of this rocket so that it separates the fluid or the air easily and overcome it uh, and reduces the drag force or the air resistance the next point we can here discuss here is the ship see we want our ship to be stable or to have a balance uh, and that can be created by designing it in such a way so that its meta center will be above to its center of gravity and uh, if it is not see what is meta center meta center is the point about which your ship is going to oscillate and uh, this meta center should be above g in this way we design our ship and if uh, somewhere we tilt our ship in this direction so uh, the gravity which is acting in downward in direction and the buoyancy force which always act through fluid to the object in upward direction so it creates a uh, anti-clockwise moment when we are tilting our um, ship in clockwise direction so in that way it is going to balance our ship and ultimately we are going to get uh, our ship in this final position number seven atmospheric flows and there are atmospheric flows that you can see over here and there are some buoyancy driven flows which you can see over here so in atmospheric flows there is also this wind mill, windmill which works and there is also this windmill which works on atmospheric flows so let's see here uh, what happens is that um, when there is a sunlight so the temperature increases gradually but when sun settles down the temperature decreases and as the temperature decreases we have the high temperature um, air at the downside and out at upside we have this co cold air or uh, the air which is of low temperature so this air this cool air goes downward because it is more denser than the uh, warmer air right so in this way and because of the higher density the cold air goes downward and because of the lower density the warmer air goes upward in direction so it creates a some kind of fluid flow or you can say the air flow and that wind actually makes the electrical energy from uh, mechanical energy by rotating these turbines next we have some flow instabilities what happens in flow instabilities the fluid flow occurs in a awkward way like see the back and forth uh, back and forth motion of this candle and see here this uh, flow first is laminar and then it becomes turbulent 
so these are the types of flow instabilities which you need to uh, avoid sometimes in order to have higher efficiency let's see uh, for example we have a jet engine and uh, the flame that we have seen recently uh, was uh, doing some back forth motion so if this flame of jet engine kind of combustion flame of jet engine uh, does the same motion and if it does it does you know 2000 times in a second so if it happens it may create a bursting or it will damage the whole jet engine itself so in order to avoid this flow instability we need to understand what is the fluid flow next we have there is a swing of cricket and you want uh, it to go properly without swinging so what you do is you just hold it uh, from center and you uh, just throw it away okay but uh, when you throw it by tilting it at some particular position in this way as you have as you can see in this figure and this flow is taking place in this direction by separating the fluid flow okay so when it happens there is this air which comes in contact with this ball and at, at uh, this particular side which is the smooth one at this this particular side you see the laminar flow laminar flow which is of which is of low velocity and at the another side which is the rough side uh, you are going to see the turbulent flow over there of air because this ball is going in this particular direction and that is creating a kind of uh, uh, separation to the fluid and that uh, fluid flows over the ball and here on this one side we get the smooth flow and that decreases its velocity and as we know that the turbulent flow is something uh, whose velocity is high so the pressure also decreases at this point and here pressure increases so flow occur from high pressure region to flow uh, to low pressure region so the force that ball is going to feel will be in this particular direction so we do fun with fluid uh, by creating some fountains and making bu bubble out of it irrigation system and channels we use a lot of fluid mechanics in that see uh, there is this irrigation system and uh, there is this open ch channel on this dam and, uh, and there is this pipe system uh, if you uh, when it comes to industry so there are uh, there are these pipes these pipe system which are very important through which fluid flow happens so for that you need um, uh, for designing of such kind of fluid uh, pipe system you need uh, you need to study fluid mechanics next we have this last one in which uh, fluid mechanics is, is important because it predicts the weather and also uh, measure the pollution level and now we uh, predict the weather by cfm computational fluid mechanics next ultimately we are going to talk about the scientist uh, leonardo da vinci who was a polymath who was architect engineer theorist artist sculptor scientist draughtsman painter everything right so he was the genius who i'm uh, who i want to talk about so in terms of fluid mechanics he uh, did a tremendous job his notes was famous and he did a lot of implementation for example there was the city in which he used to live so uh, in that whole city before 2000 year there was only this much supply 180 liter to the whole city but after 2000 year he uh, made a certain type of system power pipe system uh, so that uh, each house got 240 liter water supply next we have here is uh, he is the one who first found the least resistive streamline shape and uh, the last he also uh, made the paintings in which he manifested that the air or whatever you are separating through by some means suppose this is the ship which is which is going to separate this uh, water over which it is flowing this will form uh, vertices ahead of it i hope you got something interesting thanks for watching this video